everybody, and welcome to Good Luck High Five, episode 455. That's right, you're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering. Whether you are watching the World Championship on the edge of your seat this past weekend, or you're just like, hey, give me those sweet arena events, I am ready for them, we are here for you. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And on today's show, we're recording remotely because I was exposed to somebody with COVID. So we're just double checking, trying to stay safe. Don't know if I have it or anything yet. Um, But I will just just say, please, everybody out there, get your jab, jab yourself, jab as many times. No, don't jab yourself. Oh, well, unless, wait, can you inject yourself if you're like a nurse? I don't know. I mean, I assume if you're a nurse, then go ahead. But you didn't say if you're a nurse. If you're a nurse or doctor, you can inject yourself. Probably. I don't know what the rules are. Yeah. Otherwise, just go and get a nice professional to do it. Yeah. They're trained. They're trained in sticking you with pointy objects. And um, it doesn't hurt. If you're exposed, don't go out. Yes, absolutely. Just stay in until you've gotten some negative tests back. You know, just chill. Put your feet up. Be cool. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm attempting yeah. to be cool and put my feet up while recording this episode for you. All right. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Just wanted to let you know and give a give another shout out there to uh, get the heck vaccinated. <laughs> uh, on today's episode, we will be talking about the World Championship, which did just happen this past weekend, and specifically what came out of it. Standard, who was right and who was dead. Absolutely. What a heck of a World Championship. Like, the tournament is always great, mm-hmm. but this one was, I don't know, extra super great, I felt. It really was. It was It was so cool. Um, it was... You know, like great storylines throughout, great decks, a really incredible gameplay as always. Um, just, just a ton of a ton of great stuff. Yeah, three days of super fun magic. We got a great champion in Yuta Takahashi. We're gonna talk all about that. Plus, draft for the first time on arena in a major tournament, which was absolutely huge for me and I'm sure other limited fans out there. And it looked great. Oh, it looked awesome. So we're going to give you all the rundown about that and how it's relevant to your life for what you want to my play what you might want to play on the ladder or play in the arena Mm -hmm. open this weekend which is standard coming up here um yeah and we're going to talk a little bit a little bit about taking extra turns because you can't talk about standard right now without talking about taking extra turns that's right it's the hot button topic Absolutely. And we're going to get our thoughts on it. I, I might know Megan's thoughts and maybe you can guess them, but we're oh, going to. I bet you can. <laughs> but before we get to our main content, everybody, thank you everyone who supports us on patreon.com slash GLHF magic. Yes. Thank you so much to everyone who has become a patron in the past week, especially uh, that's Amber and Jason. Yay. Huge shout out to the both of you. Thank you so very much for keeping this show alive and on the air and happening and without sad trombone noises. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. A good luck. High five will always be free to everybody who can't afford to pay. But if you can, we hope that you'll become a member and join our good luck. High five family help support the show keep it going coming out of your cat's mouth bird's beak dog, dog's butt however it gets mm-hmm. into your ear holes uh you are the ones who make it possible it takes like just one minute to sign up and it's a buck 25 an episode and if our episode gives you joy hopefully you can give back to us by becoming a member it really does mean the world to us so yep. thank you so much patrons you get all of this content and you also get access to stuff like our discord which is just full of rad people Rad is the word. They are really rad. They are Megan super looks rad. 90s today, but yes. like, or 80s, I should say, if we're saying rad. Rad. Megan looks totally rad today. Rad. <laughs> the top ponytail. You know, what, what can I say? I just like my hair to be off my head. <laughs> Megan, before we started rolling, said she was going to her Save by the Bell cast reunion after this. Yes, that's exactly where I'm headed. <laughs> Very excited for that. <laughs> Thank you as well to our other sponsor, Card Kingdom, for being a super cool, or excuse me, rad sponsor. Yes. Uh, you can check them out at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. One of the most rad places to get all of the stuff that you need to play magic whether you are looking for some starter commander decks to get your friends into the game they've got you covered there whether you're just looking for some sweet singles to round out your own decks they've got you 
And you know, everything they a, you need. They've got a section called deals on their website. You can just go mm-hmm. over to the website, click deals, and they've got a whole bunch of sweet sales. And I'm looking through it right now. And there's a bunch of commander decks on sale. Hello. Deals, yes. deals, deals. There you go. Get some sweet commander decks from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms or some other ones. They've got a whole bunch of sales on right now. And deals, check them out. Deals, deals, deals. Deals, deals, And say good luck, high five, and they'll give you a token or a sticker in your order for free. Mm-hmm. And you know, while you're at it, throw in a little boosty pack in there. Throw in a little yeah. boosty pack. Give yourself just, a pack to crack. Just a boosty. You know, have you ever been what? like, I just need a like a little boost in my day? Boost booster. your day with a booster. There you go, Card Kingdom. Yet another slogan. There, yet another <laughs> in the in the list of golden slogans <laughs> that we have given you. All right, everybody, it's time to talk standard, and we're in a new standard environment with the release of Innistrad Midnight Hunt, and we haven't really dived into standard too deep on this podcast yet, so welcome to Standard Week. It's the Great British Baking Show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, part of this is kicked off by this past weekend at the World Championship. We saw some stuff that we were expecting, right? We saw Mono Green Aggro, which I think a lot of people felt going into the tournament was one of the best decks in the format. Oh, yeah. Um, obviously, we also saw four copies or of Is It Epiphany? Yep. Which was very well known and also considered very good. But we had some really cool innovation in there. And it turns out that innovation was where you wanted to be. Absolutely. Uh, Grixis Epiphany making its debut onto kind of the public stage here in this mm-hmm. tournament, innovating with the addition of black mana and adding Leer into the deck, really proving to be a solid choice for players who chose to bring that this weekend. Yes, you could see um, when uh, one of these Grixis Epiphany players would cast Leer, <laughs> Disciple of the Drowned, uh, who's three blue blue for a three four. Um, she says spells can't be countered mm-hmm. and spells in your graveyard have flashback. Their flashback cost is equal to their mana cost. Yeah, that like, card is absurd. Th- they would cast it, and all of a sudden, you would just see like, like, like fifteen cards in their hand, you know, <laughs> at the bottom of the screen, like all lit up from their graveyard that they could now cast. Yeah, what a genius card to add to this Ugh, list. It really was, and we saw Jan Merkel, who was piloting it, end up in the top four. So yeah, let's uh, before we get in any deeper into standard, actually just talk about what happened in the tournament in case you missed any of it. We teased it at the top of the show. Um, it was an awesome tournament. Yuta Takahashi walked away as the champion, mm-hmm. bringing an Is It Dragons list, which was a one of in the field, the only player to bring it. And in fact, differing from his teammates who chose to bring mono white, yeah, he was like, you know what? I like playing magic at instant speed i'm gonna play um dragons and yeah he took and do out you know the what? Whole tournament yeah <laughs> it was it was a very good choice very good decision yuda yeah very so good yuda started out oh three in the tournament he did very very poorly in draft yeah just um, but then just it went nasty. to just straight seven oh through the rest of the swiss rounds it was incredible it was yeah. like once he started winning it was kind of like I don't think he's ever going to stop winning. He didn't. And he didn't. He did not at all. He just, he he ran right through to the top. On day two of competition, not only did he not lose a match, he lost only one game. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. And this is wild, especially because also not losing in this tournament was Andre Strosky. Yes, Andre went 7-0 through the start of the tournament. Yeah. So that means that he didn't even have to play after round seven because seven wins got you into the top four. Yeah, he brought Is It Epiphany and he 3-0 draft, so complete opposite of you to start and draft, yeah. and then just won out the rest of the tournament and then put his feet up because he didn't have to play yeah. like Megan said. So the top four became Andre Strosky on Is It Epiphany, Jan Merkel on Grix Is Epiphany, Jean-Emmanuel Dupra on Teamer Treasures, who mm-hmm. kind of had a, like a, you know, a... Win and lose kind of way. He wasn't like straight out winning, but made no. it all the way to the top four in a tiebreaker round. And then Yuta Takahashi took the whole thing down on, is it dragons? Yes. And so when we're talking about standard, who is right and who is dead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who is dead is mono green aggro. Absolutely. Um, that deck did abysmally at this tournament. Really bad, especially since the players playing it were Paulo Vitor Domodorosa and Seth Manfield, mm-hmm. notably. Just... 5 and 14 was of, their record. Those were matches. the two players who people thought were going to win. I mean, like, I don't actually yeah. know, but I assume those were the top two find your champion yep. picks. Um, Sam Pardee 
also on the deck. Sam also Hardy. has been having like working so hard and having a really great year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Oof. But yeah, that deck just looked quite bad. Um, Maria, I'm very sorry, but mono white aggro. <laughs> yeah. Also looked very bad. Yeah, uh, mono white aggro from the World Championships data here from MTG data win rate forty two point nine percent. Not great. As yeah. they say, not great. I was playing this deck a little bit before the tournament started, and obviously I love it. It's great, but it's just <laughs> missing something, you know? Yeah. Just a little something. I think it's a good deck, but it's just like there's just a little one other thing it needs yeah. that it doesn't it, There's quite like have. some oomph. Yeah, some kind of oomph, some fi- way to fi- push through the final points of damage. And, you know, I can't complain too much because there are two creature lands that the deck mm-hmm. has, you know, because I'm, like, wistful for the days when we could make 1-1 one, one vampire lifelinkers or whatever. Yeah. Um, yep. Which, I don't know if that would be better or not. But, uh, yeah, it just it just can't quite get there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Maria. Thank I'm you sorry. for Thank you for your sympathy. Send cards um, and flowers. But who is right is these decks that innovated coming into this, right? We talked a little bit last week of how much innovation is there going to be in this tournament? Um, Or are people just going to go with what feels like the decks that have risen to the top of the field? Is it um, Epiphany and Mono Green? And it turns out innovation was where you wanted to be. This Grixis deck that we talked a little bit about did very, very well. Um, and then especially Team or Treasures, yep. uh, Johnny, Mel- Johnny Manuel Dupra in the finals of the tournament. And then Is It Dragons, perfect record. Yeah, the 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 play- three of the four top decks in our top four were all uh, one ofs in this tournament, which is just proof that like, hey, yeah. if you put in the time and you just are able to find an angle that people aren't expecting is majorly going to pay off in these small field tournaments. And I loved the fact like... They were both decks, right, that that aren't completely new. Right. They're not completely different from what's going on, but people had kind of looked at, right, like I feel like it highlights a little bit of the, the part of, or <laughs> one of the shortcomings of looking at all of these lists and being like, oh, Mono Green is like the top deck right now. And then it's like, okay, let's like hone Mono Green into the best thing that it can be. And that'll be the deck for the tournament. Yeah. Whereas Johnny Manuel Dupra was like, okay, like, yeah, a Seekers Chariot is a really great card. Oof. But like, do you know what else has been a really good card is uh, Magda Brazen Outlaw. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, do you Gold remember Gruul? <laughs> exactly. Like, do you remember like these, these big hits, Magda and, and that dragon? And he's like, why would you, if you're going to play an aggro deck, why would you not have a hasty 4-4 four, four flyer <laughs> that also just makes you mana all the time? Okay, so to speak to this, I'll say two things. One is that Jean-Emmanuel de Prav was just like, hey, uh, these cards are still good. Like, uh, did yes. you forget these? Exactly. Uh, like Megan said. And then I'm going to look up a tweet from Paulo, which illustrates in this point yes. here which paulo doesn't always like tweet very funny things so this was kind of uh i kind of <laughs> loved it um but he was like mom can i have goldspan dragon because paulo was playing yes. mono green we have goldspan dragon at home goldspan dragon at home frog he <laughs> i loved it i loved oh, it yeah. so much wait i'm playing a hasty 4-4 dragon and you're playing a 4-4 trampling haste frog on the ground like, like whatever who okay cares? Yeah. Oh, good job. Very funny. And yeah, just, you know, people were down on this deck heading into the tournament. Yeah, they were. Nobody some thought of, it was going to be yeah, good. Some of the analysts were like, why would you do this? You just took mono green and made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> and it turns out that Johnny Manuel de Pra is like, we've said it before, just like quietly one of the best players playing. Yeah. Um, he, he totally is. He's, he's absurdly good. The kind of consistency that he has, you have to be so good to be that consistent. Yes. It's not as splashy as as winning a tournament and taking the whole thing down. But like I yeah, I just cannot say enough about what a good player I think he is. And he's like, what if actually I took mono green and made it better? I love it because we said last week we were like basically like if we if Jean Emmanuel doesn't top four this thing, I don't even know if it's a real tournament. And that's yes, actually what we, happened. We literally did say that. Yeah. And when he Call was playing <laughs> when he was playing his playoff match for the top four, I was like <laughs> Well, obviously he's going to win it. Yep. It's a top four and he has to be there. The sad part is, is that he lost in the finals, which yeah. has happened to him two, two other times. So this is a third time he's lost in the finals of a major yeah. tournament. 
He's starting to become the Marcio Carvalho of standard in that he's just or like losing the, in the finals. <laughs> he's, a, he's a classic, always a bridesmaid. Yeah. I, so I'm, I really look forward to the day that he takes one down, which I have no doubt will occur. Yes. I feel like, right. his talent. Yeah. Uh, he, so. he has to at some point. At some point. The other deck I want to call out um, as being a cool one of was the Azorius Agro deck or Azorius Tempo deck yeah. of Noriyuki Mori, which... Didn't have a great performance, 28.6% win rate, no. but was a very cool idea. <laughs> it was a very cool idea. Shout out to Noriyuki Mori for having a very cool idea. Yeah, it was mono white eye girl plus blue disruption and yeah. tempo, which I think is just a super cool deck, but mm -hmm. unfortunately just just wasn't quite good enough. But I think I, I'm very, I love him for bringing it, for having that idea and for being brave enough to bring something off the beaten path in such yeah. an off the beaten path way. <laughs> Absolutely. And then we haven't talked much yet about this Is It Dragons list. Yeah. Which I am just so enamored of. I've played it some now. Um, like Saturday and Sunday night after the tournament was done, I was like, gonna fire this up, see how it feels. I un like, I get it. This is it a is Megan deck if I've ever Meganed a Megan deck before. It's so good. It's really, really good. Okay, I so for people who don't know what this deck's deal is, give me the elevator pitch why I should play it. Okay, Goldspan Dragon. Goldspan Dragon plus All Runs Epiphany. Great. Hasty 4-4 um, four, four Flyer plus take yes, extra turns. Exactly. It's just, it's just so good. I was, like, I was telling you the other day, like, I still don't remember the last time I lost a match. I mean, the deck is so strong on every level, right? Yes. Because you, you're able to control the yeah. game with control spells and stuff like All Runs Epiphany takes extra turns and then you're able to attack because you've got a hasty 4-4 dragons and you also have the dragon egg which you crack it it turns into a 4-4 dragon that does 2 to whatever when you cast yes. a spell like good it night. just runs this like it runs perfectly down the middle right where you're like it's like oh control decks you can be quicker than them yep. right sometimes a control deck just can't handle like they think they've stabilized and you draw a gold span dragon and you just like slam it and hit them exactly <laughs> Um, but then like, you know, other creature decks, you're like, well, I've got so much more removal than you and I can tempo you with like divide by zeros or like, on, and my burn removal and stuff like that. And then just slam a hasty four, four and hit you with it. Oof. It just, it attacks on both axes, right? It's, it's very, very good. And yeah. I've, I've had a really fun time playing it. I think we need to name, get a new name for this kind of deck because it's kind of a control deck, but it's also kind of not a control deck. And it's not, I wouldn't call it a mid-range deck. It's yeah. not like acting like most normal mid-range decks would. And it's not like an old school aggro control deck like Delver of Secrets decks. Right. So. Hmm. I guess that's I what like, it's closest to, but. Yeah. It's kind of like tempo. It's it's a very, very strong. Like tempo control? Tempo control. All right. I could kind of that. I could kind of feel that. <laughs> you know? Try it on for size. Okay. We'll sit with that for a little while. If you yeah. have a better idea, let us know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's talk for a hot mo about the winner, Yuta Takahashi taking down this whole tournament. Yeah, it was it was really incredible. I think at some point someone said I don't remember if this was a tweet or someone just said it of like, isn't it, it would be so amazing. You know, when he was on his winning streak, they were yeah. just like, it would be so amazing to have a champion who loves magic this much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a great way to put it because you can just tell how much he loves magic. Exactly. And like, it's so like, exactly like they said, like, what a great thing to have a champion who loves magic that much. You can see it um, in his tweets uh, the past this past weekend. He tweeted out that he had a uh, Black Lotus, which wasn't a beta, but he had been looking to upgrade it to a beta Black Lotus, but he couldn't until he like had made it into this tournament. And it yeah. arrived at his doorstep the day before the finals. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and so he's like, cool. He's like, yes, this is this this is the symbol of my love for magic is I'm Ooh. investing all of this money into this item that's like, this is the thing that I love in life. And the thing I've loved for so long, he's been playing since 1998. He's like, I saw Kai Buddha do it. He was my hero back in the day. And I wanted nothing more. This is my childhood dream to win the world championship. Yeah. And um, I'm just going to play a clip now of him making the top four, which has become pretty iconic. And I just want everybody who missed it to take a listen. Yatta! And it's kind of like you just, 
you just can't not see that clip and just feel for him. You know, I think there yeah. weren't a lot of dry eyes in the house. There certainly weren't at the news desk when he made the top four. And in fact, also when he won uh, because he broke down and cried then too. And it's just like, I love when that happens because geez, when something matters so much to somebody and they finally achieve it, just being present for that moment is mm-hmm. just, just wonderful. Yeah. Really incredible. Um, yeah, it was just, it was so great. <laughs> And what, a, what a great too. world champion. Uh, he, he he played so, so incredibly perfectly all weekend. I don't yes. think I ever knew a moment when somebody was like, oh, I probably wouldn't have done that. Or, oh, I have a question about that play. No, and I don't think that happened. played through the middle of the night. Yeah. He won <laughs> yeah. at something like 7 a.m. his time. Oh, my God. Which is just absurd. <laughs> Wow. Doing it on extra hard mode. Woof. Yuta Takahashi now gets his face on a magic card. I can't wait to see what it is. Very excited to see what it is. Yes. <laughs> Coming up here oh. in the future. <laughs> uh, Megan and I didn't win our trophy pets. Megan, uh, eventually, who did you choose? I ended up choosing Paolo. You you uh, you bent to my did. peer pressure. I really did. I really <laughs> did. And do you know what? For a while, when, like, when Andre made his 7-0 run, because I picked Andre last year. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And I was like, I, sw- I swear to God, if, yeah. if, if, if I picked Andre last year and Paolo won and I picked oh Paolo this year and Andre wins, like, I will lose my mind. You're just a year behind, you know. Or just like, flop. I, I, I was flip flop them. Flip flop them. Oh. Yeah, so at the news desk, Monty Davuti, he's our desk e- expert. Mm-hmm. He does such a fantastic job. He picked Paul correctly last year, and this year he had picked Jan Merkel. And I was like, if you go back to back, that number one is absurd. And yes. number two, what percentage of people had done that? Because yeah. we knew the data, and the number of people who picked Jan Merkel to be their champion was uh, 2%. Yeah, one um, percent, and then what's the what's the the pie on that? People who have picked Merkel this year and picked Paulo last year has got to yep. be like maybe so. three people <laughs> in the world, <laughs> in the entire world. Yeah, yep, which would yep. have been absurd. But anyway, congratulations yeah. to Yuta on taking it down. What a fantastic champion, as Megan said. Like we yeah. couldn't ask for better. It's just really cool. <laughs> So now we're going to talk a little bit about taking extra turns, since a lot of extra turns were taken this past weekend. It's true. All right. I'm ready for this hot debate. <laughs> a lot Let's of people go. have been debating, saying, should Alrun's Epiphany be banned in standard? Yeah. Here we are, a new standard. We're only a few weeks into it. Mm-hmm. So it's not uncommon that people are like, bring out the hammer! Yes. Right, Maria, a week ago, people were asking for a Seekers Chariot to be banned. Yes, that is accurate. And yep. like now I don't think that card's on anyone's radar. <laughs> now people are like, oh, I'm just kidding. The cat, the cat. It's fine. A lack is fine. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, but, but a ban all, all runs epiphany. Um, to which I say, it's a seven mana sorcery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, Maria, it's seven mana. <laughs> At the least it's six, but then you invested two in it earlier. So then it's, is it eight? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the Arena answer is there. And it's at sorcery speed, right? Like, sure, Nexus of Fate was seven, but it was an instant. It shuffled back in. Those are my two rebuttals. <laughs> <laughs> it being an instant and shuffling back in. Yes. Right? Like, All Rides Epiphany, people are only mad about it because of Galvanic Iteration. Because you can copy it. Yes, because you can copy it. But, like, you just have to have so much going on, right? Like, there are so many times when these when these decks that play Allrun's Epiphany are not using the card to win. They're just using it to stay alive. Yes. Right? You're just like, man, I need a turn, like, one more turn, another draw, two birds to chump block things. Which is, I think, the the way the card was designed to do precisely that. Yes, exactly. And so, like, yes, sometimes it does lead to this, like, annoying combo win. Um, like, maybe you've got burned down the house, right? And you make all the hasty devils. And you also make your birds and take another turn. And they're, boom, they're dead out of nowhere. Or but a hall of the storm giants attack. Or hall of the storm giants. But are you dead out of nowhere? Or were all the tools carefully constructed over several turns? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is the second one. It didn't come out of nowhere. It came out of a lot of hard work. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> I just love it. I just, just the, the hearing a control player talk about it is just so beautiful to me. <laughs> <laughs> or was it a lot of hard work? It that was a I lot of hard work. Over a million turns and you ingrates. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. The deck, I like, I don't think that the deck does anything busted. Or um, not, not the deck. I don't think that the card does anything too inherently busted. What do you think then about Galvanic Iteration being able to copy it? What if that was a ban? Do you think that would be acceptable? No, or do you, you have think to have two totally cards fine? to make it happen. Two cards and eight mana, Maria. <laughs> you have to have eight mana. I think for me, um, I don't, yeah, I, I'm kind of on the train of like, uh, let's wait and see for a little bit longer. Yes. Um, it may be... Become, it might come to the point where it's the decks are just winning too much and then it's just kind of like, well, okay. But I want to see what happens from here on out for the next few weeks. Um, and also my critique yeah. is that not necessarily is this too good because of what Megan said, like it co- does cost a lot. It requires setup. Mm-hmm. But um, perhaps our other decks don't have the tools to be good enough. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, like why sometimes we have to look to other things and say, well, why didn't we get the tools here instead yeah. of uh, why is this so yep, oppressive, exactly. but whatever. We can't do anything about that because uh, they can't print new cards unless a, they have a set release, which, by the way, we're going to have one in literally 30 days. Yes, right. We're, we are one month away from things being different. And I will say, right, it's not like um, it's not like things are 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 very bad for non-Epiphany decks. Johnny Manuel was not playing an Epiphany deck. No. And he did think that he was not, one, he did think he was not favored in those matchups. Yeah. In the top four, he lost to Jan once, but then he dropped down to the bottom bracket, defeated Andre in two matches out of three, just two owed him in matches. Yep. Um, I think he did the same with Jan Merkel. Maybe it was 2-1, but it it, it might've been 2-1 in matches. Right? But like, he felt slightly unfavored. Imagine if an aggro deck gets more tools with the next one, right? Like yeah. Johnny Manuel's deck, I would argue is very close to being able to beat these. Yeah. I'm super excited to see what to be uh, in favor because he did already beat them. Yeah, he did beat them. Yeah. Um, to, uh, to see what a Crimson Vow adds, because I can't, obviously it's going to add Vampires, yes. <laughs> which is an aggressive uh, deck generally. Um, so we'll see if they get enough tools to be able to be really great with, with that release. Um, but yeah, I think I think I agree with Megan here, which might might shock some of you, but I think... I am just, personally shocked. I we, was very I, ready to have to argue. I think we just no, need Maria. to give it a little time, <laughs> see what happens, give it a couple weeks, mm-hmm. and if it's really bad in a couple weeks, then we can think about it, but also we're going to have Crimson Vow coming out on November 11th on Arena, <laughs> so... Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, we're going to have new... We have a new standard now, and we're going to have new new standard in mm-hmm. one month. Um, but yeah, I wanted to say that my point of, like, make sure we're giving the other kinds of decks, the creature-based decks, a little bit of s- extra support if you want to be printing like stuff like this, which can be pr- feel pretty busted. I think yeah. the reason people have such, um, you know, an emotional reaction to a card like Alrun's Epiphany and Nexus of Fate and blah, 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 blah before is because having your turn ripped out of your hands feels <laughs> very personal. <laughs> um, Maria, the only thing I can recommend for you is to be the person doing the ripping. Uh, you know what? The you turn. know what? I felt yeah. like you were going to say that. I felt yeah. like you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> because do you know what, Maria? Actually, as a turns player, I have to argue with you here. I'm not taking your turn away. <laughs> oh I'm God. giving myself an extra one. <laughs> It says, it doesn't Uh, say you take your opponent's opponent's turn turn. away. It says you take an extra turn. I created an extra turn out of thin air and gifted it to myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, like, yes, you are technically correct. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. That's just, that's all that I'm saying. But it does, it is, it is a unique feel bad that is printed on this card. We have to acknowledge that it feels terrible <laughs> like yep. you're just like oh but i was supposed to be able to play this game and now i'm specifically not being allowed to play this game yeah um do you know what card took your opponent's turn emrakul you yes. remember that card oh yeah that, that one, one you took literally it. took your opponent's turn that one you took it this is a funny thing so i was thinking about this card and this ban and this discussion this past weekend and i was like what blue extra turns card hasn't been banned? That's what I just thought to myself because I'm like, oh, yeah. they all just get banned. But that's not the case. And I was like, I wonder no. how many have been printed. And so we started talking about it. And of course, we have Alrun's Epiphany now. And of course, there's the famous, the OG time walk. But then I started to think about other cards which existed, which didn't get banned, but are still played. Cards like Part the Water Veil. <laughs> 
Remember this one, yeah, Megan? I do remember Part the Water Veil, Maria. I this, cast Part the Water Veil back in my day. This beauty, four blue, blue, take oh. an extra turn after this one, exile it, and you can awaken it. Awaken six, six, blue, blue, blue. If you cast it for its awaken cost, you also get to wake up a, a land and put six counters on it oh. because the six, six land. <laughs> yep. Great card. Great card. Beautiful. And this one, which I completely forgot about, Temporal Trespass. Okay. Does this ring any bells for you? No. From Fate Reforged. Eight blue, blue, blue. <laughs> See? Okay, That's wait. what I'm talking about. Wait. Wait, does it have delve? Yes, it's okay. delve. It's delve. Take an extra turn after this one. Exile it. And I'm like, whoa, this wasn't a broken delve spell? Yeah, right? Gosh, it had delve. Yeah, I'm like, it had delve. How did this not break standard? And But it didn't. <laughs> but it didn't. It really didn't. Very strange to me. Um, I didn't even remember that card. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like we had these other busted delve spells that ruined our lives for forever, but that one was oh, totally treasure fine. Treasure cruise. Treasure cruise. I'm looking ruined. at you. Ruined. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. But then we also have famous ones like Temporal Mastery, which was five blue, blue. Take an extra turn after this one. Miracle for one and a blue in Miracles. Oh, I love Temporal Mastery. Temporal Mastery. That card is... Oh, that like, oh man, I can't like, I just love that. I love that card too much. Yeah. Can't I talk mean, about it. <laughs> um, you have like classic ones like time warp, which time mm -hmm. warp is played in extra turns in modern, right? Yes. Yeah. Three blue, blue target player takes an extra turn after this yep. one's just sor sorcery speed for five mana. And that one, was that the one that was banned in historic? Let's take a look. It was banned, yes, right? And not something else. Historic. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's an was example too, of one. It was too OP for historic. That's five mana. That's about, so much less than seven. How about this card, Megan, which I didn't know existed until now. Um, eight blue blue, sorcery. Target player takes two extra turns after this one. <laughs> I know that I've heard of this card, but I could not tell you its name. It is time stretch. It's modern legal. Wow, maybe I haven't. I feel like I would remember something called Time Stretch. <laughs> time Stretch. It's only 10 mana. Yeah. What a deal. But anyway, my point was, I looked through all these cards, and it was very fun. And uh, I, all of these blue cards, which were taking extra turns and weren't worthy of bans. Yeah. Some of them we've mentioned have been, but uh, most of them haven't. There is a green card which exists, which allows you to take an extra turn. Do you know of this card, Megan? No. I know. It was printed in Judgment, so okay. 10,000 years ago. It's seed Sick burn on people who remember playing <laughs> yeah. Judgment. Keep seed going. Seed time. Seed time. One in a green. Instant. Play seed time only during your turn. <laughs> FYI. Take an extra turn after this one if an opponent cast a blue spell this turn. Wow. Because they've watered your seed for you, and now you can take the extra turn. Cute. Isn't that Very cute? Very cute, yes. Art right by Rebecca Gay, so it's gorgeous art. Wow. Seed time. Wow. Just, that is a fun little fact. That's incredible. That I did not know existed in um, green. We also haven't talked about Time Stream Navigator, which is a creature. Yes. That allows you to take an extra turn if you have the City's Blessing. Oh, City's Blessing. Yeah. Cool um, mechanic. Yes. Yeah, I really like City's Blessing even still. Um, but yeah, yeah time card, ha having it on creatures is something that's existed. Time yes. Street Navigator's cool. Never was it's busted. Cool. Exactly. No, they can just kill it. They can just kill it. But you it also have like weird ones like Chance for Glory, if you remember this card. Um, from yes. Guilds of Ravnica, one red white for an instant. Creatures you control gain indestructible. Take an extra turn after this one at the beginning of that turn's end step. You lose the game. People put this together with the Gideon who said that you can't lose the game if you yes. if you control Beautiful. a Gideon. Beautiful. Really Beautiful. incredible stuff. Remind It reminds me of this really old card, Last Chance, which was red, red for a sorcery. Okay. Take an extra turn after this one. At the beginning of that turn's end step, you lose the game. <laughs> so Great. Very Great. funny old, like red cards giving you extra turns is like, yeah, you can have an extra turn, but then you're just going to straight up lose. You're going to die. <laughs> because you have, you have gone into the color pie and you have aberrated it. Yes. You have destroyed whatever identity red had and you must now pay. 
<laughs> Would you like an extra turn? The price is death. The price is death. And then Green is like, but we need blue to be able to do it. <laughs> There's also wild. I mean, <laughs> there's also one black card that I found that does it. Ooh. You ready for this one? Yes. Temporal extortion. It is not just black. It is for black. Black, 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 black. Sorcery. When you cast a spell, this is from Planar Chaos, by the way, any yeah. player may pay half their life, round it up. If a player does, counter it. <laughs> counter temporal extortion. So they can pay half their life to counter this for free, quote unquote. Take an extra turn after this one. <laughs> I love it. I love it a lot. Amazing. Perfect. <laughs> what a weird card. Yeah. You can just counter it using your life total. Using your life total. Modern legal. Once who again, cares? everybody who's getting ideas yeah. by listening to this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting stuff. The history of taking extra turns in Magic the Gathering. I mean, Maria, you didn't even, you didn't even talk about the most iconic extra turn of all time. Ooh, what's that, Megan? Time walk. Time walk. We mentioned it, but we're just like, yeah. it exists. <laughs> yeah, well, because you can't, you, it's restricted in vintage. Yeah, yikes. Uh, so you can play one copy in vintage and nowhere else. Uh, take an extra turn after this one. One blue. The OG, you know. It just cracks me up so much because they didn't know how to make cards in Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't know. They just they didn't, didn't know. know. They didn't know. They didn't know. They it's were magic very funny. babies. Ugh. back then but yeah be- a beautiful thing yeah a beautiful thing and of course emra cool which you mentioned uh mm-hmm. stealing turns <laughs> not just taking them but yes stealing them. that one that one steals as opposed to you fabricating an extra turn <laughs> nothing in nothing in white though uh, other than like you could i guess you could count Wild. chance for glory and uh, like yeah. a teferi or metamai the ageless which cares about turns but like no like pure white take an extra turn spell yeah Wow. Just I mean, put that out there. Rude. Every other color has one. <laughs> I know. Come on. They just printed a good white removal spell. <laughs> so yep. like maybe now it's time to print a white uh, turn spell in some kind of way, All right. way shape or form. Okay. Like wow. let's, ma- let's invent it right okay. now. Let's okay. invent it right now. Okay. Um, so white um, wants to like, what is white's what's white's deal right now? Taxing you. Um, Taxing you, making lots of tokens, um, but it's got to have some cost because it's playing in blue's territory, just like red punishes you for doing the thing. Okay, I think I, I have I have like a base idea. Okay, go for it. White, white, white. This spell costs one more to cast for each creature your opponents control. Okay. No, let's say this spell costs one generic more to cast for each creature in like on the battlefield on the battlefield so it counts yours and theirs okay oh interesting you take an extra turn after this one wow wow that's right? really because cool because white wants you to like you want to have creatures what are you doing with this extra turn if you don't have creatures on the board if you're in white yeah and so it's like oh you do have creatures on the board so you're doing your thing but because you have creatures on the board like you it costs more oh yeah. i like that a lot that's really cool that's really cool. <sighs> yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think you nailed it. <laughs> I can't make it any better than that. I can't make it any better than that. Um, yeah, like you could do it like by taxing yourself too, which is a, kind of what you did, which because I'm like, uh, it doesn't work with the opponent. Like you could say, take an extra turn after this one for the ne- And this is a weird arena mechanic. So legal and historic. Uh, your spells gain uh, perpetually. They cost generic one more to cast or something. Oh, yeah. That's a great like, yeah. Um, arena, yeah, arena only way of doing it. Yeah, something like I'm that. I'm into it. <laughs> All right, Wizards, you can have that one for free. Uh, we're going to help White <laughs> out, give them the extra turns just because they don't have one. Yeah. We thought it was unfair. <laughs> they, yeah, hey, hey, they need it. If you want to submit your it. White extra turns card to us, uh, you can tweet at us at GLHF Magic with the hashtag. Uh, my, my turn, not yours. <laughs> Hashtag my turn, not yours. My turn, not yours. Yeah. All right, everybody. It's time to thank Ultra Pro for being another one of our super rad sponsors. Yes. This is like, th- I don't know how to say anything nicer, except that I literally took this playmat home to yep. use <laughs> for my desk, like as on my desk. And Maria, my home is a no magic accoutrement zone. That's true. That is true. 
I don't, I like keep it, you know, keep it at the office. I'll play arena at home, but I do not keep physical stuff of magic in my home, except now this play mat because I love it so much. She's holding up the Arlen double face play mat. It's by beautiful. The way. I love it. I, I it's can really never pretty. choose which side to put face up on my desk because I like them <laughs> both so much. Yeah. We should talk about this. Use a play mat as your mouse pad. Okay. Yes. It's amazing. It's great. Like, why am I, why am I going to buy a mouse pad? Sometimes no. you got to use a mouse. Um, and to use a mouse, you got to use a mouse pad, but um, don't don't use a bad one. Use your play <laughs> use mat an ultra pro play mat as your mouse pad. What mm-hmm. more can we say? Uh, it's 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 gorgeous. And if you follow it's them so on pretty. Twitter at ultra pro I- intl, you can see it's the first linked tweet um, that has the Arlen play mat. And there's matching sleeves and deck box because you know you've got to have the matching set. Hello, um, they've got it all, and you can check them out. The link is in our show notes. Use that; it's our affiliate link to buy whatever you need. Get your presents early for the holiday season. I've been doing some of that, everybody. Be prepared. Um, And Ultra Pro is a great place to get something for the magic player in your life. Well, everybody, that's this episode of Good Luck High Five. Wow. Yay. Hopefully, we'll be back in the studio next week. I was going to say, recording virtually always makes me so thankful for our studio. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And you all make that possible by being patrons. We could not have that if it weren't were not for you. So yeah, you, you make a so huge much. difference. Yes. <laughs> you can huge. become one by going to patreon.com slash GLHF magic, just taking a moment and being like, Yeah, I'm gonna set up some of my end mm-hmm. of the year giving right now and get it all in order. Um, we would love to have you as a part of our family because like we just said, you make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> it cannot happen without you. Exactly. Things cost money, unfortunately, in our Ugh. society. Yes. Unfortunately, we live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, especially once. I don't know if you're going to hear Molly meowing. She's also saying thank you. Oh, I you. kind of heard her yeah. in the background. Thank you, yeah. especially big meow to Amber and Jason <laughs> yes, for becoming meow. patrons this week. Big meow. Uh, hey. If you want a big meow, become a patron before our next episode. We'll give you a big meow on the show. Thank you to Ultra Pro and Card Kingdom once again. And thanks to everybody who tuned in and watched coverage of the World Championship this past weekend. It's a really hard thing to do a show like that uh, remotely, which we've been doing now for like more than a year. And so it's it means a lot to have people watching and hanging out and oh here's molly here she is did you hear her purr (laughs) oh my gosh she is such a good purr it's a very loud (laughs) aggressive purr and there's her yeah oh hi molly (laughs) yeah there's a there's a perk of recording at home our cats get to say hi to you so hi to everybody's cats out there (laughs) from good luck (laughs) 